Hello and welcome to the VBA Jetpack course by Trumpixel. I am Sumit Bansal and in this video we will learn how to execute macros from Excel workbooks or from VB editor and different ways we can do it. So we can use buttons, we can use shapes, keyboard shortcuts or toolbar. So let's get started. So far in this course we have not learned how to write code and we would be doing that soon enough in the subsequent videos. But in this video I want to demonstrate how to run macros or execute macros. So for that purpose we would record a macro and then we will see various ways how we can run it. So let's record a very simple macro. I would go to the developer tab and here I have the record macro button and what I want to do is I want to enter my name here in cell A1 and then I want to enter the name of the course in cell A2. Now this is a fairly useless macro in real world but for the purpose of the demo for, of this video let's do this. So here I would first go and click on record macro as soon as I do this it asks for a name here. Let's say the name would be enter details and then we would also give it a keyboard shortcut which would be say control shift s. Uh, always remember that this keyboard shortcut overrides Excel's inbuilt keyboard shortcut. So in case here if I give it say control s then instead of saving the workbook it would start running the macro. So be a bit cautious when you are assigning a keyboard shortcut. I would store this macro in this workbook and I can enter maybe say the same details here enter details and now when I click OK the macro here starts getting recorded. Now I would type my name here which is Sumit Bansal and I would type the name of the course which is VBA Jetpack and then I press enter to come to cell A3 and now I would go and stop recording the macro. Now let's go back into the code sheet and see how it looks. There are a couple of ways you can do that. Either you can click on this icon Visual Basic or you can press Alt F11. Let me press Alt F11. It opens the VB editor. Here you can see it has inserted this folder which is modules. If I click on it I see module 1 here and if I double click on it it opens the code window where I have the code that I just recorded. The name of the macro is enter details as I mentioned in the previous video it a sub would always or a code would always start with a sub and end with end sub. Sub means subroutine or a procedure. Here we have in green the comments we have enter details macro and we have the keyboard shortcut these are just for reference if you want you can delete it and then let's go through the code very quickly it says active cell dot formula R1C1 is equal to Sumit Bansal. Now again this is something uh, which recording a macro does. It introduces things which may not be required but again uh, let's just go through the code quickly. So it says active cell dot formula R1C1 equal to Sumit Bansal which means that in the active cell it inserts this name and then it goes to range A2 dot select. A2 gets selected the name VBA jetpack gets there and then range A3 dot select which means that A3 gets selected. Now again let's go back to the Excel workbook. We can either press on press this icon uh, or you can press Alt F11 on keyboard. Now here let me first in insert a button that we can use to run the macro. So there are two ways you can insert a button. First is you go to the developer tab here within insert you have this button option. If I hover it over it it says button form control. As soon as I click on it you can see this plus sign I can click anywhere on the worksheet and as soon as I click there then the button gets inserted. So when I click here it opens the assign macro dialog box because this is specifically this button specifically is for running a macro. So you would have to assign a macro to it and then it would get inserted. Here I would have all the macros that I have in this workbook. In this case I only have one which is enter details. I would select it and I would then click OK. And as soon as I do this it inserts a button. You can resize this button. You can uh, treat this as an object. You can move it somewhere, you can place it anywhere you want and you can also change the text here. So let's say we say run macro. So this is the button text. As soon as you click anywhere else on the worksheet or press escape you get out of the edit mode and then you can click on it to run the macro. Now let's delete this and let's see what happens when, when we click on this. 
So when I, when I click on this, as soon as I do this, it inserts these text here in cell A1 and A2 and selects cell A3. Let's see what happens if I click here and run the macro. As soon as I run the macro, it inserts Sumit Pencil here and VBA Jetpack here, just to show you again. If I run the macro, it inserts Sumit Bansal here and VBA Jetpack here because uh, the code says that inactive cell insert the name and then in range A2 insert uh, the course name. But anyway, that's not the point here. The idea is how to run this macro. So you can use a button to run the macro and you can also use a shape here. So let's drag this and put it aside. Now let's insert a shape. So we would go to the insert tab and here we would insert a shape. Let's say I use this rounded rectangle and the benefit of introducing uh, shapes to run macro is that you can format these shapes. You can give it a nice color, you can change the format, the font, which you cannot do in case of this form control button. So let's insert a shape here and I would edit text and I would write run macro here. Again, as you can see, you can give a shadow, you can change the color, you can do a lot of things with shape. Now to assign a macro to this shape, all you need to do is select it, right click and go to assign macro. And as soon as you click on it, it opens the same assign macro dialog box, which it opened here in this case. Again, you simply click enter details, click OK, and that's it. Now, when you get out of the edit mode, click anywhere else in the worksheet or press escape and this macro can be run. You can see that there is hand pointing upwards, this icon, which means that this is somewhat of a hyperlink. And if I click on it, then something would happen. So let's delete this. Let's put the cursor here in A1. And let's see what happens when I click on it. As soon as I click on it, the macro gets, gets executed and here, it selects A3 as the final step. So you can either use a button or you can use shapes. I, in most cases, go for shapes because you can do a lot of customization with it. If you want, you can make it look like a button or you can make it look like uh, many other things. It could be a shape, it could be a rounded a circle, it could be anything, it could be any shape and you can then assign a macro. The third way of uh, running a macro would be if you go to the developer tab, you can simply click on macros. So here, let's delete this first and I've selected A1. Now if I click on macros, what I can do is I can simply select the macro and run it directly from the macro window. So if I click on run, you can see again the macro has been executed and this is a very simple way. Again, this is not as user friendly as using these buttons. But again, if you're testing your macros or your code, then you can simply click on macros, have the entire list of macros here and then select the one you want and then run it. Uh, another way of running a macro is through toolbar. So let's go back to the VB editor. I would press Alt F 11 and here I have the code. Now to run this code, it's important that I select somewhere between these subs. So I have this cursor uh, in between these two lines, sub enter details and end sub. And if I have it here and I go to this toolbar, there is this green play button and if I over over it it says run sub user form and the keyboard shortcut is F5. Now this keyboard shortcut F5 would only work in the VB editor. It's not it's not something that would work in the Excel workbook. If I click on it then the code would run. Now let's do one thing let's drag it here so that we can see what happens in the workbook and I would click on this and as soon as I do this you can see that the code has been executed and this entire thing goes here. In case there is an error or there is some problem with the macro in all these forms of executing macros it would always show you a pop-up it will show you the error so in this case let's say if I misspell this so instead of active cell I say C T I V C E L L which I know is an error now and if I try and execute this macro let's say I come here I again go back to the Visual Basic Editor and here if I try and execute this macro, it would give me a runtime error. So that would happen in any case if you run it through VB Editor or through buttons. If there is an error, it would be highlighted. So let's go back and let me correct it. You can also use the keyboard shortcut that you assign. Now it's not necessary that you always assign a keyboard shortcut, but if you do, then you can use that keyboard shortcut as well. 
shortcuts so here in this case if you remember in the at the beginning of the video we assigned the keyboard shortcut control shift s and now if i press that control that keyboard shortcut this macro would run so there are so many ways you can use to run the macro as we saw there is a button then there are shapes then you can use this macro dialog box then you can also go to the VB editor and use the toolbar uh, run sub or user form button or you can press the keyboard shortcut F5 there or you can use the keyboard shortcut that you assign to this macro while you're recording it or while you're writing the code. So this is how you can execute a macro in Excel. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you and have a nice day.